I need to know more about the Arkansas Republican Party, and I got the two guys with me today who, who can educate me better than anybody else. So let's start, Lieutenant Governor Griffin, with this. Uh, Mike Huckabee, his campaign for president. The veteran political consultant Ed Rollins, who used to work for him, was quoted on Politico this week as saying, it's being run by family members, it's going nowhere, it's dead. Is it, and, and you've had some modest engagement with the campaign. Uh, well, early on, as you know, along with a lot of other uh, uh, constitutional officers here uh, in the state, I endorsed uh, Governor uh, Huckabee, uh, son of Arkansas. Uh, I don't think there's, there's any, uh, I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that uh, Governor Huckabee has some serious challenges. Um, and uh, it, you can look at, I mean, there are several different things to look at. Uh, you know, Alice Stewart uh, is obviously a, a quality person. I, I know her well. And, uh, and, and she has, she and has left. She, she's left. Um, <clears throat> and um, you can look at the polls. And, and look, I, I, I obviously follow this stuff uh, closely. And he won Iowa in 2008. That's a big deal. Um, I, I think there will be a few, a handful, maybe three, tickets uh, out of Iowa um, to New Hampshire uh, and uh, people that receive some momentum. But I, I, you know, the polls that I've seen, uh, he's not even close to that. And, and uh, you know, that's, that's a concern. Uh, last week uh, with the debate, he was on the, what they call the undercard debate. Well, for the second time, I think. Yeah. That's, that's problematic. You said on uh, one of the radio stations, the buzz, I believe, you were some, I didn't hear it, but somebody mm -hmm. said, you said it's time for some of these JV debate people and others to think about. Step. Yeah, well, Is it time for I didn't, your friend, Governor Huckabee, to think about yeah, getting well, it? Yeah, well, let me say a couple things. Uh, first of all, um, uh, what I was, let me finish my point, which is I don't, I'm not convinced Fox Business is going to do an undercard debate. So there may be no more debates for people that are on the undercard yeah. level. So that, that's number one. Number two, I, I did uh, beat uh, Baz on beat uh, on the buzz, uh, and I did talk a little bit about the presidential campaign. I did not use the language that you just used about JV and all. What I said was, um, I think that what is giving some, uh, what is adding to the confusion in terms of where to commit and who's who's up, who's down is uh, the number of candidates we had and the support that spread out over a lot of different people. Uh, you can make the case for uh, certain individuals with certain amount of uh, uh, polling, a uh, certain, certain percentage in the polling to get out. Um, now, the other side, depending on who you talk to, and I've had this conversation in the last week, will say, well, um, if, if you like, uh, if you don't like Ted Cruz, then you ought, to, you ought to want Huckabee to be in there. If you do like Ted Cruz, then you, sh you want Huckabee to get out. I mean, so you, you can make all these different, different arguments. The point is, I think that um, there was an article in Politico this week that said there's, the race is smaller than you think. Uh, the field is, you saw it, the field, I'm sure you, you read all those, the field is smaller than you think. Uh, there's really only about four max. Uh, that are vying for those top spots, uh, and uh, and so uh, you don't want to. Say it's a what, challenge. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's well, a challenge. challenge. It, it's it's a big challenge, and you you don't have to you don't have to. I don't even have to say it. Right, um, right. His a, daughter said, uh, and she's a friend of mine. And she, she was real open about it. She said, "Look, if we don't we don't perform well uh, in Iowa, we're done. We're done." Uh, so Let me ask uh, uh, Mr. Burris, uh, by the way, do you have a preference in this race, the pres Republican presidential race? Uh, no, you, a few I don't want, and uh, beyond that, a, a couple that I can live with. The Arkansas Republican State Committee, with Huckabee still a, an active candidate, presumably with some, you would think, courtesy favorite son appeal, there was a straw vote, and Ted Cruz got 70-something mm -hmm votes. Mm -hmm. Huckabee 27, Rubio and Carson 24 and 23. Nearly half the votes, almost a majority, 44% for what? 
What does that tell you, and what is the deal with Cruz? Why do Arkansas Republicans seem to like Cruz so much? I don't know that Republicans do. I mean, Curtis Coleman would have probably won a straw poll in that room, so I, I don't know that it Over tells John you. John Bozeman? Maybe. I you know, doubt that. Uh, <laughs> well, I, 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 but anyway. <laughs> I think that's a really small pot from which to draw a conclusion. It, you mean it's not a representative group? Not at uh, all. Group? No, I don't think so. What can you tell me about the Republican State Committee that, that distinguishes it? Is it more to the right, more Tea Party-ish, more libertarian, more or yeah, just something probably people that follow it more closely. Party and, activist, you know, yeah. um, uh, no, no doubt about that. Uh, uh, I, I think that I would say it is a, it is a small sample. I've known Ted Cruz since 2000. Uh, he was on the uh, Bush campaign when I was, uh, and uh, you know I don't. I think I think he's got a lot of popularity in the South. Um, I'm mm -hmm. not saying he's going to win all those seats. But I don't think that's unique. Uh, I don't think his popularity okay. here is unique to Arkansas. Look, whether Huckabee's in it or not, who wins the Arkansas Republican primary? Yeah, I mean, John? Ted Cruz does have a lot of appeal. And I mean, it, it actually. Well, what is it? I don't know. It scares me when I talk to normal people that, that I think just view him as the one that's speaking out. I talked to a great aunt the other day. Um, I should have been less specific, but, uh, <laughs> but she said she, she liked Ted Cruz. And uh, I don't think he's our best nominee. I don't think he, he gives us the best chance at winning, so I don't support him. But I think generally when you watch TV and you read headlines, he seems like the one who's, who's maybe speaking his mind but not Donald Trump. And so right now that, that's probably enough to, to be leading most polls. Uh, I think there's better choices, Marco Rubio, uh, Jeb Bush. Uh, there's plenty of better choices. Lieutenant Governor Griffin, uh, you've, until recently, you were in Washington in Congress. Mm -hmm. Senator Cruz was there. Mm -hmm. And the word, is, and this is not a secret to anybody, that, that he's not particularly well liked in the party. In fact, uh -huh. there's, a, there's a story that has yet to be denied, even though I continue to refer to it as fact, that in a caucus he even riled the mild-mannered John Bozeman mm -hmm. with, this, mm -hmm. with this zealous insistence that you've got to shut down the government and be yeah. more forceful in your conservatism. Yeah. Is, is he that way? Does, yeah. does he have a likability um, well, problem? Well, let, let, me, let me say this. As someone who uh, was never best friends with him, but, but knew, but knew uh, him uh, 15 years ago, um, that's his biggest challenge. Uh, he, but it also benefits him with a lot of uh, people who are frustrated and angry because they say, well, the reason people don't like him uh, is not because he's a jerk. They say the reason that people don't like him is because he's fighting, he's fighting the establishment. Um, he certainly, his, his narrative is certainly one against the establishment, but um, I guarantee you that the senators that don't like him, and, and I hear the same things, it's not because he's anti-establishment. It's because um, Ultimately, not just politics, life is about relationships, whether it's your marriage, whether it's uh, you know, Getting dealing with made. journalists. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's mm -hmm. a difficult mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Um, but it's about relationships. And he has, I, I, he has in many people's eyes who know him, and I've read a lot that you've read, he has basically sacrificed um, uh, his, any potential relationships. Uh, with the colleague, with his colleagues, uh, and, and, that's, not and good, that's not a good prescription for a nominee or, right. a, or no, president, I know is it? No, uh, I, 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 I believe that. Uh, look, he is a. I'm just speaking as somebody who knows him, and I've made my preferences uh, clear. Uh, uh, but he is, um, he is highly intelligent. He is highly methodical, and um, he is very good at, at messaging. What I think he is reaping uh, politically a lot of the benefits of basically standing up uh, during some of the fights that we were having in legitimate policy debates, legitimate policy fights, but basically standing up and saying, I'm the only one up here that's standing right. up for you, which is nonsense. Right. Uh, so, and, let, do you agree with Burris that uh, that he's one that you wouldn't like to see him as the nominee? I mean, you seem well, I've to be saying made, I've already made my preferences. Uh, you, mean, you mean Huckabee? Yeah, I, I endorse Huckabee. So clearly, but I. You just essentially said he's. Well, toast. if if Governor Huckabee uh, is, is out, who, is who out. Like? Well, I like Rubio. We we'll um, come back to Rubio. Uh, if Governor Huckabee is out of the race, I like Rubio. Look, 
I think I think uh, that Rubio is con he is a solid conservative. Uh, he is articulate, uh, and um, you know I think he I think he shows incredible maturity uh, and a grasp of, of of the issues on stage. Just when I think, man, that guy looks young. He opens his mouth and I go, wow. And let me tell you something, John, and you know this. There's a reason why Hillary Clinton's folks are most scared of Marco Rubio. Um, so, um, you know, Governor Huckabee still is going to uh, do what he can, but uh, in, in Iowa, we'll see what happens there. Okay. But if he was not in the race, I think, I think Rubio is probably. Yeah. Can I make one more point on Cruz? Yeah, I would just say all, make the, all the points on Cruz. Uh, well, I think to me this is what sums it up. So if you, if you to all the conservatives who think that he's a hero for, for the way that he acts, you know, I'd say compare him to someone like Tom Cotton. If you Google Tom Cotton, you can't find literally a single quote where he has attacked or really, and certainly personally attacked Republicans of any kind, whether it's leadership in Washington or politicians here in Arkansas who maybe he has conflicts with. He's arrived where he, has, where, where he is by attacking the people on a policy level who are actually the ones Republicans are supposed to be fighting. Cruz has done the exact opposite. And anyone who would say Tom is not a conservative hero in a lot, to a lot of people, I think, I think people know that. And I think comparing those two okay. um, is... Before is, we move is, this subject, just if you will, and, and just if you don't want to do it, don't do it. Who's your odds on in the Arkansas Republican presidential primary? Who's your odds on to get the nomination? I mean, Cruz you, is, I think Cruz is probably still in it in March and probably wins Arkansas. And, but not the but not the nomination. You, you think Rubio will emerge? I think so. I, I think this is the most volatile uh, and uh, unpredictable un unpredictable presidential campaign that I've seen in my relatively long uh, uh, time in politics. And uh, I think that uh, we've got several uh, revolutions to occur uh, before we get to go time. So um, uh, I'm gonna leave it at that. Yeah, revolutions? You mean there's a lot of Revolutions but, but, means turn, turning over. Uh, I, I'm saying that what you're seeing now uh, may not be what you see uh, in, um, when we get to March. Uh, there's, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of time. All right, all right. Let me, let's switch gears to state politics, state Republican politics. And I'll, send, I'll, I'll start with you, John, because you were uh, state representatives and state representative, and then you weren't. And uh, you lost a Senate bid, and one, you didn't want me to mention that in this context, but I need to, to, to explain. One reason, I suspect, other than the fact that I wrote nice things about you, uh, is that you had voted for the private option, and, and right-wing groups in the state who opposed the private option targeted you for defeat. Then I've heard do all this private option debate in Arkansas that Republicans who vote for it are at risk of being primaried. I think it's really only happened to, uh, in the current primary in two serious cases, in both Senate. Eddie Joe Williams, opposed by a quorum court member there in his county, <clears throat> and Jane English, opposed by Donnie Copeland. Mm -hmm. Is there a real problem for those candidates? And, and, and is, is this a legitimate uh, a political uh, dynamic in intra-party Republican politics? Yeah, I, I mean, absolutely. I think uh, Senator English and Senator Williams are both going to have real races on their hands. You think they're potentially in trouble? I think, I think any time uh, a group, Conduit for Action, that most are familiar with, you know, who follow politics, is willing to spend hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, to, to attack them in, in ways that I would consider untrue, then, uh, then I think that, yeah, I think they're in danger. But you I think, think Conduit for Commerce or Action or whichever one, or both, mm -hmm. you think they're willing, willing to spend that kind of money in those two? Jurisdictions? I do. Uh, Joe Maynard and Brenda Vassar-Taylor, mm -hmm. the, the heads of that, uh, have, have all but said so. And, and the money basically comes from those two places. I think that, I think that Senator English and, and, and uh, Senator uh, Williams are going to win, but I just don't think at all it's something that, that people that support them should take for granted. You, you, you mentioned me uh, you know, as an obvious case of someone who, who, who the private option probably defeated. But there's cases of Senator Sample had a primary challenge in, in the 14th cycle, won pretty handily. Uh, Representative Alexander uh, from Northwest Arkansas lost and, and ran as a staunch opponent uh, to the private option. He was beat by uh, Representative Lance Eads, who's now running uh, for the Senate seat. So it's a mixed bag. Nothing's a death nail. Nothing's ever a, a foregone conclusion. But I, I just think that those two senators and, and, and Representative Eads uh, also 
Now they're going to have a fight on their hands, but the governor is supporting all of them mm -hmm. in their respective elections, and uh, I think they're going to run good campaigns, and I think they'll win. So, but you think they'll be battered? It's going to be tough. Oh, absolutely. What's your reading on that as the lieutenant governor of the state who keeps up with these sorts of things? Uh, the, well, the, 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 the dynamic of how much of a threat is voting for the private option and how, how serious are these two particular Senate challenges? Well, uh, let me, I will say that uh, when I was in Congress, particularly on Ways and Means, I expressed all sorts of concerns uh, about the sustainability long term at the federal level in particular uh, of uh, what uh, the private option or uh, anything that the federal government's attached to, whether it's health care or anything else. Uh, I, I think we have a long-term sustainability problem, particularly in a state that is so heavily reliant on the federal government. But having said all of that, um, uh, look, I've known Jane English a long time, since before she ever got elected um, to the House. And uh, we don't agree uh, on, on everything. I don't agree with anybody on everything. But Jane English uh, is an incredible senator. Uh, Jane English has done a wonderful job, and uh, I've watched her in the Senate. I'm supporting her. I'm helping her every way I can. I do not suspect uh, that she is going to have a problem. I disagree with uh, my friend John Burris, and he is my friend, um, and I respect him on that. I don't, I don't think she's going to have a problem because people in her district know that she has worked her, uh, she has worked her hands to the bone uh, on a number of issues. Some agree with her on, on health care and some don't, but there's a whole panoply of issues. Workforce training, she's been an absolute rock star. Well, that's and, why she cast the well, tie-breaking vote for the yeah, private option. And, and, and the governor has leaned on her in, in that area. I think Jane English is, is going to be just what fine. What about Senator Eddie Joe I think, I think the same with Eddie Joe. And, um, and I hope they are. I mean, they, no, they deserve they deserve I, Look, I, I just yeah. don't. I, I really didn't it. want to personalize those races necessarily, even though they're the two best examples. Yeah, I know I you're just, trying to get the broader. Well, just, we are, during the legislature, people are walking around, the Republicans are walking around thinking, no, this is the hardest vote that's going to cause all kinds of problems. It didn't on a widespread basis, but in these two, uh, yeah, yeah, and, and I think your point, John, is if, if, if some folks with a lot of money who despise the private option want to spend it against you, that's never good. Yeah, I mean, I mean but, that's basically yeah, what there's two well, look, sides of every coin. Yeah. Two, my two co-sponsors, Senator Dismang, Senator Sanders, were unopposed. Senator Sample won re-election. Representative Alexander lost. Uh, you can point to examples of people. Elections are more than about one so thing. It's not a clear path. No, right. elections and are more than about right. one thing. That's right. It, it, it'll be it'll more, be more complex than that. And look, I, I know. Uh, I've got friends on both sides. Uh, I, I've expressed my concerns for years. Okay. I will continue to I'm express them. signal we're out of time, but I've got to ask you, you're the big man in state government right now. The governor just appointed you to fix the human services department. I'm still five foot eight, man. Mm -hmm. My kids think <laughs> no, I'm short. But before, I do, I think your job, and correct me if I'm wrong, take a look until March 1, before we get a new human services director, at how it's organized. And are some of these offices and divisions overlapping. Is that your job? Take a look at the organizational structure and uh, meet with whoever I think I need to meet with and, and get some ideas in my mind, sit down with the governor one-on-one -on -one and let him know what I think. That's what I'm going to do. Well, good luck with that. Thank the you. Human Services has, uh, hey, they're, they're has a critical uh, agency. frustrated a lot of people who well, try to get a handle on it. But let's be fair. Uh, they fr uh, there's a lot of frustration there, a lot of the problems that people have with state government there, yes. They also are on the front lines dealing with very difficult problems. My wife is on the board of The Call, uh, big foster um, uh, uh, kid uh, group, and uh, so okay. I know of these issues intimately, and we we got to fix it for all our all Kansans. Right. Got to wrap it up. Uh, so I'm going to say happy holidays to you guys, and you all can say Merry Christmas back to me. Okay. I'm going to say God bless you. All right. Keep the Christ in Christmas. That's what it's all about. Merry Christmas to you, my friend. Merry Good Christmas. to be with you guys. Thanks.